Today we are going to learn about different types of bell curves. First of all, anybody tell me what this type of bell curve is? Corey? Directional selection. Very good. One extreme is best for this graph. Once. Very good. Now the next type of graph is this. Can you tell me what this is? Stabilizing selection. Very good. And what is best fit for this graph? The middle. Very good. The middle. And the last type of graph is this. And what does that represent? Disruptive selection. Very good. And disruptive selection is when? Both extremes are best suited for the environment. Very good. So both, too. Come on, class. Don't be late. Take a seat. Take a seat, my friends. Hey, bell has rung. Sit down and be quiet. I'm seated. Shut up. <laughs> you shut up. I am subbing for Mr. Roth today. As you can tell, he's not here. <laughs> So, okay. we are going to begin. Can anybody tell me what the five components are for no biological evolution? Hmm. No mutations. This means that no new alleles or different mutations of allele forms can be added to the population, causing a difference. Okay, yeah. next can one? you tell me the next one? No gene flow. No gene flow, that's correct. And this means that no migrating. No migrating. What's that In mean? or out, right? In or out of a population. So no taking away of alleles and no adding new ones. Okay. <laughs> Equilibrium. Can you tell me the third one, smart boy? Uh, a small population. No. <laughs> large, large, large population. Large population. See. <laughs> anyway. So, you think you're so smart, answer the next one. Read them yourself. Or I smack you. <laughs> Did you hear that? Um. Um. <laughs> um. <laughs> no, you get wrong again. It's opposite. Random mating. Oh, I hear you. Random mating. Hello, and welcome to the special episode on the Discovery Channel. We are here in the wilderness and we are about to experience a first-hand account that's never before documented of random mating. So pay close attention and watch and learn. Oh, it's happening right now. Shh, shh, shh. Never before seen. Watch as a white bear approaches a black bear who's obviously unsuspect is not suspecting this. Watch as it gets in the middle. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful, man. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Look at them. It's never before seen. Oh, God, he sees me. <laughs> Anybody? I'll give you a hint. So to the end. No, no, no. Natural no. selection. That means that there is enough food to go around for everyone, so nobody starves. Everybody has equal chance to survive, to pass on their own genes. What's your name? My name is... It's Mr. Ballard. Never heard of that one before. No, I'm a new, new guy. New guy, huh? <laughs> Today, we're going to learn about the five components of natural selection. Blake. Who? Oh. No. Armin, can you explain one of them? Variation in traits. Aha! Okay, who's got the second one? I got it. Okay. What? Offspring. I bet you don't even know the third one, Mr. Ballard. Heredity. Heredity? What is the fourth one? Um, competition. Competition. What's the last one for the win? Environment. This was the five components of natural selection. Why? His voice is so beautiful. And his colors are amazing. I really want a piece of him. <laughs> Today we are learning about one of the most famous scientists, Robert Malthus, most famously known for his theory of overproduction. He, alongside with Pope, on the puppy. It's only no what? This one's a bit bigger. Oh my gosh. Holy oh my gosh, it's a million overproduction! Hello, class, we are now learning about Lyle and his theory of uniformitarianism. What does that big word mean? Uniformitarianism? Yeah. Yes. That means that basically, 
Thousands of years ago, the Earth went like this. And guess what it does today? Wait, it does it spin the other No. It still goes like this. So it's the same thing? It's the same it's thing. It's the same? No. So I don't know what I love that guy. Yeah, he's a very famous guy. He proposed the idea of natural selection. In what is natural things. selection? Natural selection is when the environment basically singles out the most fit to survive while the less fit die off. How does that happen? the best traits to go on and reproduce. The fourth guy is Lamarck, who thought that you could acquire traits... What is that supposed to mean? You could acquire traits through use or disuse. We have an example coming up. We do? Yes, we do. Right you really think so? Yeah. Well, if my dad can do it, then I can do it, according to Lamarck. Oh, oh yeah, one more try, one more try. <laughs> Daddy, oh, why does the balls go in the pocket? Well, well, Lamarck said it was! No! But Lamarck was wrong! But he said it would work! No! He was wrong! Uh, Lamarck is wrong! Uh, Lamarck was wrong! Which is why you suck! Hello, we are in Alaska and we are we are now witnessing a never before documented <laughs> <laughs> Never before documented what? Random mating! Oh yeah Hello, we are now witnessing random mating This has never before been documented So pay close attention and Yes! Oh. Hello my friends! We are here in Alaska and we are looking for... No, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was my saying? Frederick von Wieland style? <laughs> I am Frederick von Wieland. I am Frederick von Wieland style. <laughs> my accent...